morning students in this video we are going to study about the conditional prob probability in this uh, video we will learn that how can we solve such kind of the questions related with the conditional probability uh, by means of a formula or by means of the tree diagram or the venn diagram now the first thing is that what is conditional probability so understand that whenever in a question they are talking about some experiment it means they are talking about some of the experiment from that experiment two events are there are two events which they are talking about okay in which one of the event one of the event has already been occurred okay and they are ask you to find the probability of the second event so in that case you will always apply the conditional probability formula which states that p means the probability of a event such that such that or this slash means given that okay so you will use the word given that given that b has already been occurred so the first first event you are going to write that for the probability that you need to find out the other event you are writing that already had been occurred is equal to the probability of a and b okay it means that what is the intersection of a and b divided by the probability of the occurred event so you can see with the formula this b is after the given that okay so this is the probability of the event that already had been occurred and in the numerator you are writing the probability of a and b and you already remember that probability of a and b can also be written as probability of a times probability of b okay let's try to solve some of the questions and try to understand that how can we memorize these formulas okay the question is andrea is a very good student the possibility that she studies and passes her mathematics is 17 by 20 what is meant by this thing if the probability that andrea studies is 15 by 16 find the probability that andrea passes her mathematics exam given that she has studied now remember the word given that or for one of the for one of the event they use the word occurred or they use the word visited or they use the word no or new they use the word like seen or in the end last but not least given that so such kind of the words show that you have to apply the conditional probability so what is the what in your case the probability they are asking you they are asking you to find the probability that andrea passes her mathematics exam given that it means such that she has studied okay so this is the situation so what is on the top on the top you will write the probability of pass and study okay because you use the word and pass and study divided by the other one the, that is the probability of the occurred situation that probability that she study now find out probability that pass and study passes and study is 17 by 20 so over here you will write the 17 by 20 probability that andrea studies is given as 15 by 16 now here the students make the mistake in writing the this kind of the situation in the in the calculator please understand that this black 
this quotient means divide. So when you write in the calculator, you make it here, write down 17 by 20, then put here divide and then over here write 15 by 60. Only use this method to write it in the calculator. Write it in the calculator and get the answer. Please try to use the calculator correctly. So, 17 by 20 divided by 15 by 16, it gives me 68 over 75 as the final answer for the probability that she passes the mathematics given that she already studied it. Now the question is in the class of 100 students 60 of them are French and 10 of the French students are female. Find the probability of selecting a female student given that the student is French. Okay. So first if you want to write the formula you will see that here you can say the probability of female who is French means female and French divided by the probability of French students. So what is the probability of the female and yani the and a French okay a French female what is the probability it is written that 10 of the French students are females so the students who are French and are females are 10 out of what out of 100 divided by probability of French students so 60 students are French out of 100 so the probability of French student will be 60 divided by 100. So in short when you will solve it it will gives you 1 over 6. So because 100 will be cancelled by the 100. So 10 divided by 60 this 0 will cancel by this 0. So 1 over 6 is the probability. And if they ask you to write in the percentage then multiply by 100. So easy. Now let's see the trick and Try to understand this question by a trick so that you will never ever forget. Okay, now here there is a table given to you which states that it is about the medal distribution from the 2000 swim, uh, Summer Olympic Games. Now don't, don't waste your time in reading complete table that what is United States getting and how the Russia is getting the gold, silver and the bronze medals and so on. Just skim, skim the test and come to the main, main question. In the main question, it is given that find the probability that the winner won the gold medal. So, the probability that the winner won the gold medal given that the winner was from United States of America. So, what is the best scenario to write it without the formula? So, what you have to do, see here in the denominator we write the probability of USA and in the top you write the probability of Persons who are from USA and they won the gold medal. So keep this in the mind. No need to write the formula and waste the time. So the first thing is you always look what is after the given that position. So after the given that position is USA. So what is that? So here is the USA, right? This is the USA. So what is the total of the USA? 39 plus 25 plus 33. So I am writing here, I am not wasting my and your time in simplification. So this is the probability of the USA. So only, no need to make the complete total and everything. Just see that what is the total of USA and write it in the denominator. So we will do the adding, subtracting subtraction, division, multiplication in one go. Okay, first of all we will write over here. 
Now, how many of the USA people win the gold medal? So, you can see only 39 people of USA win the gold medal. So, you can write it in the calculator and get the answer. So, pause the video, write it in the calculator, come back. So, you will get 39 divided by 39 plus 25 plus 33. So, you will get 39 over 97 as the final answer. Okay, again, one more time that whenever they ask you this situation, what do you do? Just see that this is the USA which is written after the given that. Write it in the denominator, the total of that thing. And now gold and USA, yani from the USA, how many got the gold medals? Just write on the top. So this is the easiest way to solve the questions with uh, having a table. Now let's try another question. A couple has two children. Okay, What is the probability that both are boys? If it is known, again the question what? Given that, known, seen, visited. If this is coming here, it means we have a conditional probability. What is the probability? Conditional says that both boys, that both are the boys, both are the boys. Given that or known that one of them is a boy. Okay, so probability of having a boy is given. Okay, so the boy is already you have in the family. So what is the probability that the other is also a boy? So first of all, try to understand the example that a couple could have a boy or a girl, right? Means the first children is a boy and the second is a girl. Or it could be a boy and a boy, right? Or maybe the older girl, older child is a girl and then the younger one is a boy, right? So these are the, or maybe they will have a girl and girl. Now what is given? The given situation is that one of them is already a boy. So it means this situation vanished. Right, so one of them is a boy, maybe over here, girl boy, or boy boy, or boy girl. So, the situation which is given to us, how what is it? The situation which is given to us, we always write it down. Okay, so we always write it down. So, the possible favorable outcomes or the total outcomes are three in the denominator. Now, boy boy. Okay, so the first is a boy and the other is already a boy. So, it is only, only this situation that already there is a boy and the first will be a boy. So, you have answered there is one possibility out of the three possibilities. So, this is the way we will write our situation. To clear the previous question, let's take this question. A couple has two children. Okay, so how the children a couple could have? Maybe he will have a boy girl. Maybe he will have a boy boy. Maybe they will have a girl boy. Or they might have the sequence of the girl girl. Now read it. If the younger one is a boy, okay, so what is the probability that both are the boy? Okay, so the formula is yani the probability. What is the probability that both are the boys given that the younger one is a boy? Younger one is a boy. So, younger one is a boy. Here, girl, girl. So, no possibility. Okay, so you just make it cross. Now, the younger one is a boy. So, younger one over here is a boy. And younger one could over here is a boy. So, younger is a boy. It means the possibility is 2. So, write it in the denominator. Okay. Now, both are the boys. So, both are the boys. How many possibilities are there? Only one possibility. 
Okay, so 1 over 2 is the probability that both the boys given that the younger one is a boy. I hope that this will clear your mind. So, this is the short trick we are understanding without the formula. Let's try this question. Sometimes in the questions when it is a very big question or it seems so much complicated, then it is good to make a Venn diagram if you are familiar with or make a table or just make a tree. Okay, so let's understand. In a group of 100 students, 40 of them are taking the algebra. So there are total 100 students. 40 of them are taking the algebra. 30 are taking the biology. So 30 of them are taking the biology. Now 20 are taking both algebra and biology. When the word both comes, okay, so the most appropriate thing is to make a Venn diagram. So make a big box. And make a Venn diagram means like this. Now here in the first circle you write the algebra students. In the second circle you will write the bio students. And in the middle in this part you will see the intersection part. So how many students are taking the algebra? 40 students. How many students are taking the bio? That are 30 students. And both algebra and and biology are taken by 20 students. So, in the middle, we will write 20 students. Okay. So, now they are saying if a student is cho chosen at random, is taking the algebra. It means he is already taking the algebra. What is the probability that he is taking the bio also? Okay. So, what is the probability of algebra? Whatever is given to you, we write in the denominator. So, what is the probability of algebra? So, the probability of algebra is 40. And how many total students are there? Total are 100. So, 40 divided by 100 is the probability of the students who are taking algebra. Now, now, here what do we write on the, in the numerator? Probability of students who are taking both biology, both algebra and biology. So, students who are taking both algebra and biology are 20. It means 20 students out of 100. So, what is the answer? You will get 2 by 4 that is 1 by 2. Okay, so just write in the calculator, get the answer. This is 100 and 100. If you don't want to write, it is 100%. It will be better if you don't write it. So for the short term, only write the number of the students who are taking the algebra. Why? Because directly, because total students are given that are 100. Even though it, this total students and total students would be cancelled out. Okay, so that's why no need to write them and waste your time. So, only write the students who were taking the algebra that were 40 and the students who are taking both algebra and biology were 20. So, this short trick is the best trick and it will not mislead you. Let's see here. In a group of 100 students, 40 were randomly put in a Monday art class. Okay, so in a group of 100 students, 40 students were taking the art class on Monday. Independent of that even, 30 students were they put in a Tuesday botany class. So 30 students were taking the botany class on Tuesday. Now since the, the students or the, this thing they use the word independent so it means that the Monday students whether they are taking the botany or they are not taking the botany we are not concerned with this. If a student chosen at random is in the art class it means that the given position is that they is already in the art class. 
what is the probability that he is also he or she is also in the botany class okay so in the botany class now let's see here so botany and art class right now let's understand this thing so we don't know what is what is the probability of botany and art class right we know the probability of the student who are taking the art class that is 40 by 100 right but we don't know that what is the intersection of botany class and art class okay it is not given to us so in that case we know that the probability of botany and art can be written as probability of botany class and means multiply by probability of having the student taking the art class divide by probability of art class now probability of art and art cancel no need to write down so only probability of students who are taking the botany classes their probability is 30 divided by 100 so it will gives you 3 by 10 as a probability of students having taking the both botany and the algebra class in a class 30 percent students failed in physics okay so 30 percent percent always be written as divided okay so the students who failed the physics who failed the physics their probability is 30 by 100 or 3 by 25% 25% failed in mathematics it means probability of students who failed in math is 25% that is 25 by 100 okay that is 1 by 4 if a student is selected at a random from those who failed in maths okay then what is the probability that he is failed in physics too? So you know that the probability that the student is already failed in maths so that he could fail in the physics also. What is the probability? So we know that the probability that he, fa he failed in physics and maths divided by the probability that he is failed in the maths now okay here i just made that the there are 15 percent students who failed in both physics and maths so here both physics and maths probability is given as 15 by 100 okay so it is already given as 15 by 100 okay so now so how do we wrote the students who failed in maths and the physics both okay it is given as 15 divided by 100 all upon students who failed in maths that is 1 by 4 write it in the calculator and get the answer so just pause the video and write in the calculator Please write as 15 divided by 100, 15 divided by 100 and then put the divide sign and then write 1 over 4, okay, 1 over 4 and it will gives you 3 by 5 as a probability. When a question with a big text is uh, given to you don't uh, waste your time in reading each and everything just skim the text and try to find out the important things which are which are going to be useful for you so a baker makes 186 cookies so in one glance i can i can see that he is making a total of 186 cookies and in the table also this figure matches over there 
Some are chocolate chips and some are oatmeal raisin and the both kinds are made with and without nuts over here. Okay. So if the, because they are most popular, the baker made 2 by 3 of the cookies chocolate chips. So 2 by 3 of chocolate of the of the cookies were chocolate chips of the cookies were chocolate chip this is what they are trying to tell me of can be converted into the mathematical symbol that is multiply so 2 by 3 of total cookies what are the total cookies the total cookies were in 186 it means that the chocolate chips in total were about 124 so, on the chocolate chip, I will go over here and in the total, I will write 124. If a chocolate chip cookie is chosen at random, it means there are two events that the, ch uh, the cookie is chocolate chip. What is the probability that it will have the nuts? They are asking me to find the probability of the cookie having the nuts, giving that the cookie is chocolate chip. So, I know my formula but before the formula let me write or fill up my uh, fill up my table. So, if the total is given to me with one of the values, so what I do, I subtract 186 my, minus 124 gives me 62. Okay, so 62. Now, if the total oatmeal raisin is given to me and one of the value is given. So, in order to find the second value, I will subtract the total, the value from the total. So, 62 minus 40, I will get 22. Now, with the nuts, I have to pay attention on the most important event which they are asking me. So, here I am trying to complete the table with you, but you don't need to... Uh, complete the table uh, because it is unnecessary for you. Now, 186 minus 104, it will give you 82. 82 minus 40, I will get 42. Then 124 or, uh, or I will have 82 plus 22, I will get 104 and 82 plus 40, 42 will give me 124. So, now my, my table is complete. According to this one, what do I write in the de denominator? I see what is the total of the chocolate chip. So, the total of here is the total means they are talking about here. So, the total of the chocolate chip given to me is 124. I will write in the denominator. And out of those chocolate chips, how many had the nuts? I will not see here and there. This part I will just skip. I will only keep my eyes on the chocolate chips which has the nuts. So, about 42 chocolate chips have the nuts. So, my answer is 42 divided by 124 it will gives me it will 42 it is 0 0.338 okay so this is the probability of nuts given that the cookie is chocolate chip let's see here there are 500 students in a certain school so the number of the school the number of the total students in that school is 500. 150 students are enrolled in algebra. So, out of 500, 150 are the students who are eligible for taking the algebra. And 80 students are enrolled in the chemistry course. Okay, 80 are in the chemistry school course. There are 30 students who are taking algebra and chemistry. Now, remember in the previous, previously I told you that whenever both values are also given, it is better to make the, to make a Venn diagram. So, in the algebra course, 
in the algebra course 150 students are enrolled in the chemistry course 80 students are enrolled and in both course over here I will write how many students 30 students are enrolled in both the courses it means both in algebra and chemistry okay and overall students are 500 if a student is chosen at random what is the probability that the student is taking algebra so probability of student having taking the algebra is total number of students okay are my total outcomes so total students I, I write always my total outcomes in the denominator and how many students are taking the algebra 150 students just write in the calculator to find find the final answer what is my b part b part states what is the probability that the student is chemistry given that the student is also taking the algebra so how do we write probability whenever given that i have to put a slash given that he also taking the algebra i will write over here and probability of taking of taking or enrolling in the chemistry course okay how do i write i told you that the probability of algebra itself okay because the given that possibility always write in the denominator so what is the how many students 150 students out of 500 students are taking the algebra course okay and the probability of taking on the top we write the probability of the students taking algebra and chemistry means both so what is the probability of the both students we know 30 out of 500 now i told you that in in order to simplify your answers or no need to write this 500 because this 500 will be cancelled with this 500 so 30 over 150 is the probability which is which going to give you that the probability of the students taking the chemistry given that they are already enrolled in algebra so 30 divided by 150 it will give me 1 over Okay, now the last part is what is the probability that the student is taking algebra given that he is also taking the chemistry. So over here the process is reverse. So what is the probability of the student having taking the chemistry is 80 over 500. I told you ignore the 500 just write the 80. And what is the probability that he is enrolled in algebra and chemistry? That would be 30. So your answer will be 3 over 8. I hope that this cleared your mind. So again I am telling you whenever the two situations are given and along with the both situation, along with the both situation, always take the help of your Venn diagram because it will help you to understand the complete scenario. Let's try to solve another question with the same technique. So here is a question that there are 200 birds in a zoo. 70 birds are male with the blue eye with the brown eyes. 100 birds are female with the brown eyes. 20 of the birds are the male with the blue eyes. 10 birds are female with the blue eyes. Okay. Now what is most important thing or after reading that question what comes in your mind that there is a situation like there is a zoo and inside that zoo there are different birds and in the birds there are the categories like there are male and female bird and then again there is a category of the male bird and the female bird containing the blue eyes and the red eyes uh, and the brown eyes and so on means there is a situation and inside that situation there are different situations so whenever such things comes whether they ask you in the question to construct the table or not you have to construct the table because it is the best way to solve the other questions by uh, using that scenario or that strategy 
so whenever there is a they do they ask you to make a table just i am trying to make some columns and some uh, and some uh, of the columns and some of the rows in that table now understand what they are asking you they are talking about the birds containing the male and the females means the birds are categorized by the male and female so whether write the male or female on a in the rows or in the column anywhere you can write you can write here male here female no problem okay now the males are categorized male and females are categorized by the brown eyes and the blue eyes so i can write here so if on these places i am writing the male and female then on the place of male and female i will write brown and blue eyes okay now once it is done and here you will write the total okay on this part you will write the total on this part you will also write the total and after the final total over here you must contain that 200 birds okay that matches the 200 birds which is written in the question in the beginning that here okay that in total there are 200 birds let's be stay with me try to finish this table now they are saying 70 birds are male with brown eyes so male and the brown eyes just right here 70 okay 100 birds are female with brown eyes so the female and the brown eyes this okay this is the uh, this is the part where you have to write 100 20 of the birds are male with blue eyes so here in the male and the blue eyes you just write 20 10 birds are me female with the blue eyes so in the column of the female and the row of the blue you just match it and write here 10 once it is done add them 70 plus 100 gives you 170 20 plus 10 gives you 30 and if you add them 170 plus 30 vertically you will get 200 now add the vertical columns 70 plus 20 gives you 90 100 plus 10 gives you 110 and if you add this in the horizontally 90 plus 110 also gives you 200 so your table is absolutely correct now try to use this table to solve the different parts of the question the question what is the probability that the bird is female so they are not giving you only no condition is given only the probability of a female out of the total birds okay so how many females are there there are you can see that total females are 120 so this 90 means total male this 110 means total females so out of out of 200 birds there are 110 there are 110 females so 11 by 20 is your probability now see the second part the second part says the male with brown eyes are they specifying that male given that it has a brown eyes no they are just saying that the male and the male which male who has a brown eyes so they are not giving any condition so how many males with the brown eyes are there male with the brown eyes are 70 out of what you are not given another condition so of course if the condition is not given your total probable your total outcome will be total number of birds okay so that would be your actual grand total so it will gives you 77 by 20 now c part a female given that it has a brown eye so now here there is a condition given that you have to give the probability that it is a female given that that it has a brown eyes now in such conditions we go to the conditional probability formula now for the formula you will write the given that situation in the denominator so what is the probability of the birds having the brown eyes no matter they have they are male or female you just go to the brown eyes so what are the brown eyes total is 
the total brown eyes are 170. Okay, so the, the birds having the brown eyes are 170. Out of 170, how many birds are female? Which means that in those brown eyes, where are the female birds? So here is the female birds having the brown eyes. So we will write 100 divided by 170. So 10 by 17 will be your probability. Now, if the concept is cleared, very good. If not, um, rewind, the, rewind the video and try to solve the questions from the beginning. And stop, pause the video and do the question part number D yourself. Okay, so the part number D says, find the probability of the bird which is male given that it has a blue eye. So see, probability of the bird which is male Given that, that means such that it has a blue eyes. Now, the blue eyes, whenever given that situation, the given that will come in the denominator. So, how many birds have the blue eyes, no matter they are male or female? You just go for the blue eyes and see how many birds have the blue eyes. So, you can get the total of the birds having the blue eyes in the horizontal column. That is 30 birds have the blue eyes, right? So, write 30. Out of those 30 birds, out of those 30 birds, how many of them are male? Out of those 30 birds, you can see that there are 20 birds which are male. So, 2 by 3 is your probability. So, the last part D says, that what is the probability of the creature, it means what is the probability of the birds with blue eyes, okay, given that she is a female, okay. So, now again, it is the given that position. So, what is the given that position comes in the denominator. So, how many females are there? What is the probability of females? Okay. So, how many total females? So, females total you will get it in the vertical column. So, it means 110. There are total 110 females. Okay. Out of 110 females, how many of them have the blue eyes? So, you can see there are 10 females having the blue eyes. So, you will get 1 over 11 as the probability. So, I hope that this question has cleared your mind. Now, try to understand the situation and try to solve the questions yourself.